1977, 78 economy was just. You think this is bad today? This is a this is a dream compared to what we had. Okay. And I bought an air compressor, basically a, a the pump and a tank and a motor and a bunch of stuff from a guy that was going to build an air compressor and he just never did. Hmm. So I put it all together and my dad says to me, he says, well, where's your regulator? I didn't even know what that was. I, what sure. are you talking about? Right. Well, he says, you can't run that kind of pressure when you're painting. Boy, I looked up how much a regulator costs. I didn't have that kind of money right there. Okay. So I wanted to do the priming on it. So I set up an extension cord and I put my dad out on the patio and he'd watch the pressure. When it got up to 40 pounds, he'd unplug it. And I'm in there painting. When it got <laughs> down to 30, 80, plug it back in again. Wow. I primed that whole car that way. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I didn't have the money for it. Yeah. And we got it done. Okay. So that's... Where there's a will, there's a way, right? You know, there was a lot of a lot of stuff that was done back in those days just because it was the only way you could do it. Yeah. I you can't at, just go to Amazon or anything, right? No, 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 no. no. And there's it, no such thing. No, and, and, you know, you, I look at what I, it's funny. I look at what I have now to restore cars. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have two welders, a plasma cutter, an air compressor, a small metal lathe, yes. uh, a 900 square foot heated shop garage. You know, you'd think, wow, now it's the dream. Now I don't have the ambition to do <laughs> another car. It's like, ah. Uh, you and need every, to find some young, uh, I don't know if you have uh, grandkids no, or whatever, no you know, so, okay. No kids, but you know, every time I, th even every time I think about doing a car, and I see something that I kind of like, and my wife always says the same thing. Where are you going to put it? Sure. Because we're at that point where, okay, we got no more space. Yeah, space. That's the like the biggest thing you need. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and money. Well, that's it. See, that's it. There, you can always there, make more money, right? Oh, heck, we, well, that's not the problem now. The problem <laughs> is I just don't have the ambition to go out and crawl underneath these cars anymore. Yeah. You know, yeah. I just don't want to do. I used to love doing it. Yeah, it's like. Well, whatever. just drive this one, enjoy am, it. You know. That's why this and one? Man, I it's always, an incredible car. I always say, the best part about this car, it's done. <laughs> it's finished. It's done. That's awesome. Wipe it off, change the oil once in a while, and do a little maintenance, and but it's done. Gotcha. Um, so, wow. I bet it just purrs too, eh? You know, it really does. Yeah. Uh, I rebuilt the engine. Uh-huh. Went completely through it. It's a 277, 277, huh? 277. It was the year before the 318. 277 They came high out fire. with the 318 and 57. And everybody's familiar with the 318. I mean, they ran those. Oh, yeah, 318. Years. Yeah, that's what I have in my uh, scamp right yes. now. Yes. Yeah, let me take but a walk around. the newer version. That's true. See, they ran this one until 67. Okay. So is that a speaker right here in the dash or? Yes. That is a speaker. Yes. That's okay. A speaker. I love all the, man, look at that. Wow. Clock. Up on the top. And that was that was a factory. That was a factory. That is a factory clock. Okay. That is where they put it. If it was going down the line and the the billing sheet called for a clock, that's where the clock went. Wow. It's in the owner's manual. It shows a picture of it. How to set so the clock. So let me clock. see here. It says eight twenty. Look at that. Well, it keeps keeps good time. Yeah. Wow. Well, I cheated. I sent it away and there's all quartz movement. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you do that, that makes sense. Of, you do that kind of stuff. But the, you kept the the, the feel and the stuff. yeah. I didn't yeah. I didn't add anything that wasn't here. Man, yeah. You know, even vent windows back then. Back then. Oh yeah. Know, look they at got this. Got rid of those in 70. Look at this interior. Oh yeah. I had a really hard time finding this material. And okay. I found it from a company in Portland, Oregon. Wow. And they literally weaved it. They literally made it on a loom. Yeah, the forward look, right? That was it. That's it. It was Virgil Exner's forward look. Yeah, Virgil Exner, yeah. 
power flights. That was the transmission. Okay. Back years ago, they started when General Motors started with the Power Glide. They put the insignia on the back to let everybody know that it had the automatic transmission. Wow. And Ford cool. had the Fordomatic, and then Chrysler came out with the Power Flight in '54. Okay. And Dual antennas. But this was the last year that they put the insignias on the back. They didn't do that anymore for the transmission. Yeah, the dual antennas, those were a gift. An old mechanic friend of mine that taught me a lot of stuff over the years, he had those in the garage. Hmm. And I ended up with those when I got the car after he passed away. Wow. And those were original NOS in the box with the instructions. <laughs> That's cool. They're very hard to find. Oh, yeah. So they're that. for this car, and they're a Mopar part number, and they're an accessory part number. Hmm. You went to the Mopar dealer and you bought them over the counter. Wow. Yep. So what's the color? It's called Wedgwood Blue. Wedgwood Blue. Wedgwood Blue and eggshell white. Okay. And it always had the skirts? I put the skirts on. Okay. I had a friend of mine. Um, he had three sets of skirts for this car. Brand new in the box. Okay. All different designs. Different styles. Some of them fit up in. Some of them were smooth. And we put this one on, and my wife just said, that's it. That's, that's, the, one, that's huh? the one. And so, so when I painted the lower section, I painted the skirt at the same time. Hmm. Well, if the boss approves it, then. She picked the color. <laughs> um, there, was, there was three different light blues that we could have went with. Okay. And she saw this one, and she said, that's it. Now, when I bought the car, it was what they called turquoise blue. And it was a little too greeny. Mm. It didn't look blue. It had it had too too much to the yeah. to the green contrast gotcha. and I didn't particularly care for it. When we saw this color, she says that's that's the color. Okay. Yeah, I think even like a robin egg blue yeah. kind of has a little yeah. more green it's, to it. Yeah. You know, this is yeah. uh this is yeah very very so, well done. Looks great, man. Thank you. Yeah. Enjoy it. Oh, I do. For I sure. Absolutely love it. Wow. And I love, you know, man, they just don't make cars like this anymore with all the trim. Yeah, let's hear it. Wow. That's it, eh? Interesting how you could adjust. Yeah. With that. Yeah. I mean, everything, everything on these cars was adjustable. Nowadays, everything's got a computer. Right? That's correct. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, you did a fine job. Well, thank you. Yeah, look at this. Do me a favor, close the hood for me so we can get a picture of the, the whole car and see what it looks like here. And look at that, man. Just, uh, you know, back in those days, right, late 50s, yep. uh, that was a very common thing to have that big well, the ornament jet, on the, the front. The jet age was the middle 50s, and everything had a jet. Yeah. You know, the yeah. Oldsmobile Rocket 88, everything was Obviously a rocket. The Chevy, or a right. Jet, yep, all yeah. that kind of stuff. It's kind of funny that hood ornament. Uh -huh. When I bought the car, I bought the car out of West Palm Beach, Florida. Okay. And I bought it these pictures those top pictures are what he sent me okay so i bought it looked at it said okay well he showed me that picture of all the stuff in the trunk mm -hmm. that's all i saw was that when i got it home and i started going through it was like christmas because all this was all brand new nos in packages oh wow all these turn signal lenses this hood ornament all this chrome underneath here was all the bumper guards. They were all brand new wow. in the box. And those are some of the hardest parts oh, to find, you know what I mean? to try and find those turn signal lenses. They're like nickel and dime you they for sure. They were literally <laughs> in a box with the screws right from the factory. Oh man, wow. Oh, uh, there, so, there was so much stuff in there. The carburetor, okay. the fuel pump, the wheel cylinders, the master cylinder, 
was all in boxes in the trunk. They had bought all these parts. Unreal. But they didn't go any farther with the restoration other than buying the parts. Okay. And for me, it was like, it was very important to get that stuff. Oh, yeah. Extra hubcaps, uh, tail lights, tail light lenses, all that stuff was in there. Wow. So, yeah, you might still be looking for the stuff. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, I know some of the stuff that I had to find was, <laughs> But you know what? That's one of the nice things about these. Hmm. When you're looking for parts, you make a lot of friends. Oh, 100%. You make a lot of acquaintances, a lot yeah. of people. Um, there are parts from on this car that came from Minnesota, California, Alaska. Uh, the list is endless, the, some of that's the stuff cool. that I had to find. Yeah, you know, and that's part of, uh, in my opinion, that's kind of part of the appeal, right? It's it's the people that you meet along the way. You know, you might go traveling now out west, and you say, "Hey," yeah. and they remember you, right? And yeah. you meet up or yeah. whatever. Well, we had a, we had that, a that's couple. Cool. We met a couple. Uh, he was from Minnesota, and I had some parts he needed, and he had some parts that I needed. Okay. So they drove here from Minnesota, stayed at our house for a weekend. That's cool. You know, I just talked to these people yeah. on the phone and they showed up and they, they've turned out to be great people and and he brought me stuff that I needed and I had stuff that he needed and it just mm. went back and forth. Right on. But it was so funny. One of the problems that I had was trying to find the armrests. Hmm. And the armrests are made out of plastic. Well, you all okay. know what happens to plastic when it gets 60 years old. And particularly, most of these cars come from down south and the heat just bakes that stuff right so Probably cracks right? i did some investigating and i found i used to belong to the plymouth owners club okay and i found a guy in the plymouth owners club that was into 56 plymouth and he lived in alaska and i got on the phone and i said you know have you got any of these armrests oh he says, I got three or four parts cars. He says, they got perfectly good armrests. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Well, think about it. They're not going to get beat up by the sun in Alaska. Mm. So they turned out to be in really good shape. And yeah, it was it was an interesting journey. It really was to get it to this point. That's really cool. Yep. And so this vent up here, that's like a cabin air, right? Fresh yeah. air, right? What so that was, that was the last year they did that. Okay. Because in 57, they started doing like what this car had. Okay. They okay, yeah. started yep. doing the vents up in here where there was nothing. That I open gotcha. and closing vent, that went all the way back into the 20s. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And But this was the last year they used it. Nobody, nobody used it after 57. Wow. So yeah, super cool. Your, I, I could say that was your air conditioning, but they actually did have air conditioning in those days. Okay. Yeah, fresh air. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Look at that restoration. A little bit of sheet metal work I see had to be done here. Nice. Yeah, it engine. was. It was from Florida. As far as I can tell, it was a pretty solid car from down south. The only thing I had to do. I had to have a section of the trunk made. Yeah. I had a sheet metal guy actually make me the, the piece and I did the work. Okay. But what happens with these cars doesn't make any difference where they are, what state they're in. When the rubber around the trunk lip gets bad and it rains and the moisture gotcha. gets in there, yep. it lays on that in that trunk floor and it rots the floor out. And the only thing, it, I was lucky, these have a spare tire well where the spare tire fits down in. Okay. And the plug was out. So any moisture that got over on that side went down and ran out. Cool. And I didn't have any rod on this side. So this, just, this would be the plug here that we're talking yeah, about, right? Yeah. Okay. And yeah, yeah. that wow. whole one side is all just the way it came when I bought it. I just had to replace the, the driver's side. Yeah. Wow. Original hubcaps? Yes. They had an opportunity. Okay. They make hubcaps for all the cars in that era. They're a wire wheel hubcap. Okay. And they were made by a company called Cello. And 
Hmm. They made them for Ford, they made them for Chevrolets, Buicks, Plymouths, Dodges, DeSoto, whatever. And I've seen a few of them. And they look really nice. And I had an opportunity to buy a set. All I kept doing was looking at those thinking, that is going to be a lot of work cleaning. <laughs> and these, I like the looks of these. Yeah. So I just decided I've got a couple of extra sets of these. I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to leave these. So those are the original hubcaps. Those actually were in the trunk when I bought the car. Wow. Yeah, they look real good. I mean, obviously, they go with the car. They do. <laughs> Incredible. Very, very cool. Be careful. Yeah. Because I've every one of these I've ever wow. seen, this is usually sitting up here or laying on the seat because Power somebody hit it and says broke in the middle. It. Wow. Right. Yeah, yep. that's probably a big deal, right? You were mentioning AC, right? Power steering, right? Right. Those are all. Uh, this car did not have power steering and power brakes when I bought it. I put it on. Okay. And push button, right? With the power that flight. That was the first year. That was the first year for the push buttons. Uh, in 1955, it was a lever up here on the dash. Oh, that really? You selected. Okay. 54 was the, the on the side of the steering column like we're all familiar with. Yes. And they moved it up here. Then they went to this in 56. Okay. And they ran this from 56 to 64. And okay. the only reason, this car here, this uh -huh. is a 64. That's the last year. So this is the first year, that's the last year. And hmm. the reason they got rid of it in... Hey, Stace. You got a card? That's my wife. Oh, okay. Decided to mandate the gear shift levers for 1965 because people were getting in other people's cars and not knowing how to drive automatics. Okay. Because some of them were push buttons, some of them were levers. Some of the General Motors reverse was all the way at the bottom of the quadrant. So people were jumping in and pulling them all the way down thinking they're getting low. And they're getting reverse. Okay. So they get in these and they didn't know how to work the push buttons. So they standardized everything to a lever in 1965. Oh, wow. So that's the reason that everybody had to get rid of the push buttons. Hmm. It's a shame because I really like them. They really work good. They were literally foolproof. It was a cable that went from the back of the push buttons, went down into the transmission. Mm -hmm. And there was nothing, they didn't break, they didn't, they just worked. Okay. They're out of the way, so if you've got kids in the front seat, there's nobody gonna get near it, only right, the driver. Right. It was a really good idea. Huh. But, like a lot of things, the government says, nope, that's no good, so we're gonna get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, that's one thing, right? You can't stop change. No, no. <laughs> it's always and gonna happen. they've actually gone back wow. on some of the cars now to push buttons. I don't know how they got by the laws, whether they changed things. But well, interesting, you know, because my new truck has a dial. Yes. Right? So yes. things are of them still changing, right? Yes. I mean, yes. oh, yeah, incredible. Yep. Wow. Well, I appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much. So you're from uh, East China, so not too far from here? Yeah, yeah, just the other side of Marine City. Very, very good. Well, wow. Fantastic. Love okay. the story. Okay. Really appreciate it, okay. Bill. Thank you.